Hey guys, my name is Titan and this is the 24th episode of Widerstein. My very small, or not, not that very small, but my small German um, town. Now on the schedule for today would be the transition from the lower into the upper old town. With the last episode um, having been sort of a yeah filler episode as I had quite a, uh, quite a few of them already. And today we actually start um, going up the hill into the upper old town before with the next episode we again have a small pause and after that we actually will finish the, um, the old town as a whole. Now for today um, we are doing this area here with the um, yeah with the end of the lower old town with this gate tower here and then the first buildings of the upper old town the baroque old town and the idea for this area here was that um, this was the well during medieval times this was the upper gate of the um, back then um, the yeah, town of Wederstein which is now the lower old town and so I of course wanted some sort of um, gate tower here and for that I used the, um, um, the, the council tower from Sibiu which is a town in Romania and the tower originally um, or in the beginning also was a also was a gate tower but later it was used as um, yeah a watchtower a store building um, it had many uses in fact during history for here it's just the um, gate tower and and then of course for the ma for the ba ba bam <laughs> For the most time of its history, this was the um, yeah only this tower was the gate between lower and upper old town or back then lower and upper town, and somewhere during the um, twenty uh, no sorry during the nineteenth century, so um, about I'm guessing eighteen seventy probably, and um, the so when uh, yeah at around eighteen seventy I suppose. Um, the gate tower was sort of, um, yeah, it, it, it got a bigger um, passageway, meaning that the road got split into um, an, an inbound road and an outbound road, as you see here. So for the most time of its history, the tower or the gate was just this single tower with just one um, passageway. And then somewhere in the 1870s or 1880s, um, the second archway got built so um, more traffic can pass through the gate. And things like that happened quite a lot um, in historical towns where the um, old, yeah, where the old gate towers still existed. I, for once, um, for this particular tower here, or for this particular particular situation here and um, got inspiration from the German town of uh, Freiburg in Breisgau um, where there also is the historical gate tower and next to it they built sort of another gate with some half timbered um, structure on top of it which gives um, in Freiburg it gives a really unique feeling and I wanted a sort of a similar look here in Widerstein. And now that this tower is finished, we can continue with the, um, or, well, we, we actually can finish the lower old town. And that is just um, by placing some uh, more half-timbered houses here on this side of the river, as this still is the um, half-timbered side of Wederstein. Uh, and you also see me here using my, um, my medieval city wall network that got released just um, about a week ago from today so from um, from the day when this episode is released and you'll notice that it looks quite a bit different compared to um, the release version and that is um, because I have been working on this Wederstein episode for quite some time actually and in between that time there was um, a bit of time where I couldn't um, yeah where I couldn't play because I had 
PC problems, um, some of you may heard of that from Twitter or somewhere. And yeah, by now I got a, well, I didn't get a, get a new PC, but at, at least I get new hardware. I got new hardware and now everything is working. It's actually working better than before. And I, yeah, I continued working on Widerstein and everything. And so um, you'll notice a few things in this episode that um, yeah might look different from um, today because recording uh, the recording of this episode actually stretched over, I suppose, two or three weeks. And there actually was the or the I actually started recording this episode. Then, for a brief time or for a brief time then I recorded the 23rd episode and then got back to the 24th episode um, you might have or might not have noticed that in the um, intro sequence for the 23rd episode there was this part and um, that we're working here um, at the moment already visible but um, yeah that shouldn't have been that big of a problem so um, we're here back with um, back in uh, back on schedule or whatever and it's not nothing too special that I'm doing here it's just plopping buildings over buildings over buildings I'm using quite a lot um, procedural objects in this episode and on this part here it's just that um, with PO I can make the buildings here in this area fit in the um, in these small um, in these small areas between road and um, between road and the city wall and aside from that in the other cases it's, ju it's just to, um, to not have too many props on this map and I'm hoping that's not a problem at some point when I don't know the um, mod maybe gets broken or so and half of the buildings and structures in Wederstein would be gone um, because the procedural objects wouldn't be loaded into the um, onto the map anymore, but let's just not hope that this happens. And aside from that, it's just um, plopping and plopping and plopping of buildings here. And now most of the buildings in the lower old town are done and we can continue building the transition from the lower into the upper old town. And all in all I have to say that um, today's episode actually took me a really long time um, to get yeah, to record and to build everything. And so maybe you'll notice I had to cut quite a few things out of this episode. Um, for well, it's the things I did cut out are not the important things. It's mostly just some um, just some plopping of buildings, no um, major detailing or um, something like that. It's just um, plopping buildings because this episode already is. Well, it actually is really long and I didn't want it to be still longer and so um, yeah, you sometimes may notice that there are a few things cut out of the episode but 
I don't think that sh should be too big of a problem. And for for this area here that I'm currently working on, I had the idea of yeah of of of, of still having the um, the city park here or there because we're not um, anymore in this area. Well, continuing with here. The building that I'm currently propping here, or that I'm um, yeah, fitting together out of my um, Eisenach City Palace um, castle wings assets, whatever. Um, this um, is supposed to be the Bishopwickel, the well, sorry, the Bishopwickel Palace of Wederstein. So the um, palace of the Bishop of Wederstein. And the idea was that. The um, yeah, the bishop's palace is sort of on the other end of the um, of the line of sight between the um, duke's castle um, and well, the bishop's palace. So there is a straight road between these two um, palaces or castles. Though of course the um, ducal palace or whatever the palace or the castle of Wederstein is not yet built. I think that will um, happen in one, no, in two or three episodes. We'll see. And for this area here, um, what we are currently building is about the area that um, during Baroque times or during um, yeah, pre industrialization times, um, there was the um, city wall of Wederstein here, the Baroque or the. the um, Renaissance city wall, not the medieval city wall. And later they um, demolished the Renaissance city wall and only kept the medieval city wall because of um, yeah, because of aesthetic reasons. And on the yeah, on the um, area where the Renaissance city wall was, there were um, or there were buildings built. And that is what um, I also want to make visible here by the choice of buildings. So you'll see that, um, as you see here, we have Gründerzeit, Founders Age, Founders Period, whatever houses um, that got built during the industrialization. And in contrast to that, we have Baroque and Renaissance buildings that are here since um, 400 or 400 that would be 1600 from today yeah so these buildings are here uh, for some um, 300 to 400 years so um, these buildings that we are propping now are um, industrialization age buildings and now come the baroque buildings and so you sort of can imagine that where today is the city park and is the or are these um, cube houses there and there was the Renaissance city wall and so I, I always like to um, to yeah, incorporate these real life um, designs into my um, city skylines projects so um, from a yeah from a sort of city historian look or from from an urban planning look um, or whatever you always can see um, how the how the city grew and I really like that and now here um, we are just plopping some baroque houses and you'll notice that most of these houses aren't yet um, on the workshop because um, I'm still working on this set to be big enough to be released as of now there are seven buildings done and my plan is to have 12 buildings um, ready when the set um, can be released so and then on that point I will release um, the first four buildings on the first day and then um, the following days the next and the next and the next buildings but up until then you'll see them here um, on my Wederstein series and maybe um, in a few other projects from other um, yeah, youtubers or players um, that have access to these buildings. For example, um, I gave Aquas. Aqu oh, I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name. Um, I gave him access to these buildings because I thought they would fit quite well in his 
the city. But don't worry, there will be um, other workshop as I, well, I always upload my buildings to the workshop because I don't want them to be only, um, yeah, to be hidden or whatever. And yeah, here I'm using um, Lost Gecko's um, Cobble Roads that he released um, not so long ago. Um, and they fit pretty well here. And they actually also look really good. And so I thought it's also, it, it's just fitting to have some um, better cobble roads here. And now, the next part of this episode is the um, yeah the transition or the, the the end of the old town, so to say. So this gate was the or was one of the um, Renaissance or Baroque city gates, even though the gate building here is, um, or the, the archway is um, neoclassical, but uh, whatever, the institution of this gate here is uh, one of the renaissance gates, and in this area there are still a few um, parts of the um, renaissance city wall intact, for whatever reason um, they have been kept here. and. When in just a few uh, minutes we will um, working or we will work on the um, on the Bishopical Palace, I thought it would be nice to actually incorporate the city wall into the into the design of the um, of the palace. And for these city walls, I used the um, and I'm sure I mispronounced the name, the Lie, um, I guess, city, uh, no, the, the, the walls from the Lie, whatever, <laughs> fortress, um, you can find it on, on, um, on the Steam Workshop, and those are really great, because um, that is how city walls looked um, during the Renaissance or Baroque period. And here now we're doing what I said, um, the Bishop Bishoprical Palace. Oh, that's a complicated word, man. I am sorry. The um, let's just say Bishop's Palace, okay? So the Bishop's Palace um, was built really on the edge of the old town, and so the um, the garden of the palace actually has the um, yeah, has the wall behind it, so to say. And for that, I um, let myself inspire. Let myself inspire is the right. Um, I got inspiration from Würzburg, which is another city in Germany. And there you have, you also have the um, Bishop's Palace. Even though the Bishop's Palace in Würzburg is huge compared to this, um, but there the um, palace also is on the on the border of the old town, right next to the. Um, um, Baroque city wall and in Würzburg the um, palace gardens got incorporated into the um, wall and I also wanted to have um, this here though of course my solution for that isn't quite as um, quite as beautiful quite as impressive as um, the one in Würzburg simply because it's a uh, much much smaller than in Würzburg. But if you're interested, feel if you're interested, interested, feel free to um, look up Würzburg. It's um, really a great um, castle and great palace. And once you um, look for Würzburg on Google Maps, the first thing you will see is probably the castle or the palace. And yeah, here I just thought um, it would be nice to have some sort of. Uh, yeah, still have the um, city park here and um, next to the river and I thought um, this would be a quite nice spot to have or to still have the garden and to have a walk or go um, yeah, have some or go running or meet some people whatever I thought that's quite um, it's quite a nice place for um, for well for the park because um, yeah this is the area where the um, wall once was, and when the wall got demolished, they, um, the people had the choice: do we build buildings here or a park? And the city um, decided to make, um, build a park here. 
and I think um, that this fits quite well. But here you also again can see the um, different building styles I chose for this area. So on the one, yeah, on the one side of this block here we have faint builds, um, Gründerzeit houses, and on the other side we have the Baroque houses um, that I made. So you really can see um, with where the city was um, 300 years ago and where it got extended later. And this here is something that I was, well I wasn't, let's say I wasn't excited about but I really liked it <laughs> at least. And this is the um, small baroque garden of the bishop's palace. And I decided to uh, make this small garden here for, um, well on the one side because basically it, it fits really well and it definitely makes sense that the bishop um, would have or would also have a small baroque garden but on the other side um, as a bit later on we will have a not a much bigger but definitely a bigger baroque garden on the castle of Widerstein I thought um, this year would be good to get used to the um, possibilities I have to make baroque gardens so when I'm later on when I'm doing the um, baroque garden of the of the Duke Palace of Wederstein. It looks how it's supposed to look. And for the most part here I'm using Ronix's um, boxwood um, yeah boxwood props and those are well those are Baroque garden props so to say. They are supposed to be in Baroque gardens. And with those and some tulips from uh, Mr. Mason, I'm doing this um, small parterre here um, of this of this small um, baroque garden of the um, bishop's palace, and I think in the end it definitely turned out pretty good. It still could be better, but as I said, um, I'm still getting getting used to the possibilities I have now to um, make a proper baroque garden in the game. And yeah, I, it's still not perfect, but I'm definitely getting there. I hope at least. Um, so I really would like to have your opinion on this, um, yeah, on this garden. So if you have any critique or so, definitely write it in the comments. I will read it. Um, that I promise you. And here now that all the plants are planted. In the garden I thought let's place some um, benches because of course nowadays the, um, the garden is open to the public and so visitors can um, yeah, have a walk through this small garden and can sit. And then here on the side of this um, garden I thought let's make some um, yeah it's like make some vine or some vine roof um, trellis things there I don't know uh, to call them in English and um, and I thought I think also those turned out um, not too bad at least um, all in all I think I'm pretty satisfied with this small baroque garden and then of course here we're having a small cafe with um, totally overpriced coffee and cake but um, you usually have those in a small, or you, you often or usually have those in these um, gardens or buildings. And of course just some invisible pathways so people actually walk in the garden. And now on to something that, well, um, I, I think I have in almost every episode um, and that is backyards. But um, I think they are such a such a crucial um, thing to have, um, and such a yeah, it's backyards are a small thing, but they really um, make a city more realistic, in my opinion. And so, I of course have them in in almost every episode. But um, for this episode, I only included the um, detailing of the. Um, old baroque backyards because for those 
I tried to achieve a bit, well, old look. A look that you sort of see that they are old uh, backguards. And to achieve that, you'll uh, see that in just a few seconds, I placed some um, of Hadis's, Hadis, I think, Hadis is um, how her name is to be pronounced. Um, I plopped some of Hadis's um, vines on top of the walls there to um, yeah, have them overgrown a bit. And I think also that turned out pretty good and gives or definitely gives the illusion of, um, of, of yeah, garden structures or backyard structures that are older. And again you'll see me using quite a, um, quite a good um, amount of procedural objects here but um, this mod is amazing and why not use the possibilities that we have through this mod that would be a bit pointless. And as we have backyards, of course, what um, what I always do in backyards is some um, uh, yeah, terraces with chairs, and of course, um, washing um, washing lines or washing um, is the word cradle. I'm not sure. Um, just some um, structures to keep your clothes um, or to dry your clothes, because that is how uh, most people do it in Germany. And this is about the last um, part of this episode now, is the detailing of this little square here and later the square in front of the bishop's palace. For this square here, I thought let's just plop a big tree and that's it, not too much um, detailing. Um, the more interesting thing on this square in front of the, in front of the gate here is a small cafe or a small beer garden that uh, you'll see me doing in just a few seconds that is sort of raised above the square and I think um, that also turned then out pretty pretty nice. You see it long. You will see it in just a few seconds. Now we almost are there. But um, if you'd excuse me um, I already talked quite a bit in this episode and my mouth is feeling a bit dizzy now. I can't talk anymore. <laughs> but this episode is coming to an end anyways and I think I covered all the important stuff that is to say about this episode. So for now I would say goodbye, leave you with the last few minutes after of this episode and then of course the time, uh, no sorry, <laughs> the cinematics we um, of course have a look over all the areas we built in this episode. Now if you like this episode definitely leave a like and a comment here and if you want to stay up to date with this series feel free, well, feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit the tiny little bell icon to get notified when I upload a new video. And if you have any critique definitely also feel free to write it in the comments. Um, yeah. Then, if you want to support me further, I would really appreciate it if you would support me on Patreon. And by that, a huge thanks to all you people who already support me on Patreon. That really means a lot to me and yeah, it's it's amazing what is possible today. And yeah, I also have a Discord server, so if you want, you can join my Discord server and have a talk with me or other people that follow my series. That's it for today. I hope you liked this episode. We'll see us again in the next episode. Until then, have a nice time. Take care of yourselves and bye.